I knew I wanted to do something rediscovering the joy of reckless abandon that you had at 17 years old where any of us that picked up a guitar and, and played just because of the sheer excitement of doing it. Dwight Yoakam. He got famous by bucking trends and sticking it to the man. But then he disappeared. So what happened? For years, Dwight was your favorite country singer's favorite country singer. While his peers were making sugary ballads and pop crossover hits, Dwight Yoakam was taking the genre back to its roots. When you don't believe the word I'm saying. In 1987, he showed up unannounced at Buck Owen's office and convinced him to do a record. Now Buck hadn't had a hit in years, but The Streets of Bakersfield was a smash hit. Hey, you don't know me, but you don't like but then, seemingly out of nowhere, he disappeared from music, simply nowhere to be found. In 2006, he briefly re-emerged from the shadows to perform at Buck Owens' funeral. But he seemed like an entirely different man. I'm gonna, in deference to Buck, wear my hat as I sing for him. Because he chastised me a lot over the years about various things. So what happened to Dwight Yoakam? What huge failure made him disappear? Who did he really date in the 1990s? And most importantly, what is he up to today? Let's find out what happened to the guy who tried to take on the country music establishment and lost big time. Before we dive in, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and subscribe to the channel for more. Now come on, you don't have to be a hillbilly to keep watching. So let's go find out. What, what happened? happened? Too raw for the industry. Country music stars often follow a well-worn path, hustle in clubs for a few years, move to Nashville, play sessions for years, and then catch a big break. But that's not exactly how Dwight Yoakam played it, and the music industry would never forgive him. You see, Dwight learned early how scammy Nashville was. He originally moved there from his native Ohio for a record deal, and that turned out to be bogus. So instead, he went to LA, a place where country music mingled more with punk music than boardroom executives. Instead of making pop ballads, Dwight put out record after record of authentic, gritty honky-tonk tunes. First, guitars, Cadillacs, etc. Then Hillbilly Deluxe. Finally, to seal the deal, there was Buenas Noches from a Lonely Room. Left the wounded behind. All the while, Dwight made it a point to criticize Nashville from afar. He slammed Columbia Records when they dropped Johnny Cash. And he blasted MTV for refusing to show country music videos. When he got a record deal with Warner Music Nashville, they told him he needed to stop using the term hillbilly, which they thought was derogatory towards the industry. But Dwight kept fighting as long as he could, and for a while, it appeared he was winning. But then he started losing steam. His records were selling less and less copies, and he was getting less and less respect from the establishment. But by the time 1995 rolled around, it appeared he was losing his war against Nashville Machine. Instead of becoming a legacy act, Dwight basically disappeared. What little music he put out got very little recognition. And so, Dwight took his talents in an unlikely direction. All the world's a stage. So where did Dwight Yoakam go? He turned his efforts to the screen. It seems like every actor nowadays wants to be a musician, and every musician wants to be an actor. Some are actually successful at that transition, but many, many others are not. So did Dwight have what it takes to go to Hollywood and make it? Well, Dwight started off with a small part in a crime drama, but then his career began to take off. He had a significant role in the Billy Bob Thornton film Sling Blade. Then there was the Richard Linkletter movie, The Newton Boys. He starred alongside Sheryl Crow in the film, The Minus Man. 
And believe it or not, Dwight was, drumroll please, pretty successful. He got some credit when the cast of Sling Blade won a Screen Actors Guild Award, and he gained a reputation for playing charismatic, devilish villains. A far cry from his endlessly likable musical persona. But then Dwight began to get ideas. It wasn't enough to star in films. He wanted to be in charge, so he concocted a plan. He would write, direct, and star in his very own western. Of course, he would also do the soundtrack. I mean, what could go wrong? Well, as it turns out, a whole lot. Right before the production began, the financier for the film backed out, leaving Dwight a choice. He could say goodbye to his passion project or pay for it himself. Dwight gritted his teeth and coughed up the cash at a big cost. He had to sell his house in Malibu, and somehow, things just kept getting worse. Dwight had less money to pay people than he had planned, and his production company went bankrupt really fast. He ended up getting sued by half the cast. Dwight racked up so much debt that he had to fire most of his backing band. I mean, these guys had been right by his side throughout his entire career. Well, at least the film was a huge hit, right? No, of course not. It was a critical and commercial bomb. And while Dwight still had a reputation as a good actor, he was paying off debt for years. What was he up to in the meantime? Well, for one, he was trying to find love with some very complicated results. Unlucky with the ladies. It's easy to associate our favorite performers with the music they put out, totally forgetting that they do also live a real life behind the scenes. While Dwight was being rejected by Nashville and Hollywood Now, he was dealing with some very personal struggles too. Dwight was kinda stuck in the middle of two cultures. He was too rock and roll for Nashville and too country for Hollywood. So could this have contributed to his lady problems? Well, let's find out. Sharon Stone Now Sharon Stone had iconic roles in Total Recall and Basic Instinct. He gave me a lot of pleasure. So everybody was surprised to see her at the 1992 Oscars alongside not an actor or a model, but Dwight Yoakam. Wearing a classic cowboy hat, of course. Sure, Dwight was hot off a Grammy, but that's a whole different level of star power. So how did things turn out? Well, not for the best. The pair only dated for a few weeks, and then Sharon went around town saying that kissing him was like a quote, dirt sandwich. Ouch. Karen Duffy. From then on, Dwight knew better than to swim with the sharks, so next he dated Karen Duffy, who was most notable for her role in Dumb and Dumber. They dated for two years, but this relationship also did not last. Winona Judd. With his next gal, Dwight decided to stick to his comfort zone country music. He dated country singer Winona Judd for a brief spell. Dwight's band was opening for Winona, and she reportedly told somebody, quote, Find me that man in the cowboy hat, and he's mine. But neither artist, both of whom were touring across the country, could settle down long enough for real romance to bloom. It would be years before Dwight would finally get a lucky break. But when the time came, you can bet your butt he was ready. Where is Dwight Yoakam today? Many people in his position would completely give up on music. Dwight had enough success in Hollywood that he didn't really need music to survive. But that's not how this guy works. After years of commercial failure, Dwight came back with a vengeance in 2012. He put out an album called Three Pairs. Since then, he's continued to put out some pretty quality records. This is the music industry has changed, and not everybody has to be a pop hit maker. I think there's now more room than ever for genuine artists like Dwight Yoakam to cater to a small but very, very loyal fan base. But that's not all that's new. Still kicking. Fans were recently shocked to hear that Dwight was married. No, not to a model or a starlet. To a normal, down-to-earth gal named Emily Joyce. It seems like Dwight learned his lesson about dating giant stars. We actually don't know much about Emily, other than she is a photographer, and I'm pretty sure they both prefer it that way. 
The two lovebirds had been dating since 2010, but they kept it a secret for an entire decade. So, in 2020, they finally had enough waiting around and decided to tie the knot. There was one little problem. Because of the lockdown rules, only 10 people could be present. But again, I don't think Dwight really cared. In fact, he might have preferred it that way. And just months after that wedding, they announced a son named Dalton. Of course, Dwight was 63, but that's not gonna slow him down one bit. Now, for a little bit of sad news. Why the heck is Dwight not in the Country Music Hall of Fame? It seems that Nashville still hasn't forgiven him for refusing to go along with their plans. Dwight, however, isn't the kind of guy to hold a grudge. Behind his music, his acting, and his brand spanking new family, Dwight Yoakam has more than enough to keep him plenty busy. And he's also an entrepreneur. He has a nationwide brand of frozen foods called Bakersfield Biscuits. I do believe Buck Owens would be proud. All right, that's enough of me. Now we really need to hear from you. Who out there is a fan of Dwight Yoakam? Give me your favorite album, his best song. Have you ever seen the guy perform live? Do you think he's actually a good actor? Please get in the comments and tell us all your thoughts. If you enjoyed our deep dive, please hit that thumbs up icon. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what, what happened? happened?